Stem and Leaf Plots Part 2. In this video, you're going to learn how to interpret stem and leaf plots. And the first and most important thing to do is to look at the key that describes the data in your stem and leaf plot. So let's see how that works in an actual problem. Number three says the stem and leaf plot shows the approximate height of the 20 tallest waterfalls in the world. Interpret the data. So the first thing I'm going to look for is the key, which is here. And it says that the stem on the left side is four, the leaf on the right side is six, and that means 460 meters. So that's telling me that the stem is actually the hundreds place on this stem and leaf plot, and that the leaf is the tens place. So that's very important. Now that we know that, we can look at the stem and leaf plot and interpret the data. Let's start with the tallest waterfall. Now remember, stem and leaf plots are listed in order from least to greatest, so the last number is going to be the greatest value, and that will be the tallest waterfall. Well, the last stem that we have is a nine, and the last leaf we have is an eight. So the nine, if that represents the hundreds, means 900 something, and then the eight represents the tens, so that's 80. That means the tallest waterfall in the world is about 980 meters. Now we look for the shortest waterfall. And because the stem and leaf plot is listed from least to greatest, that means this is going to be the first value in our stem and leaf plot. The first stem I see in the stem and leaf plot is four, and the first leaf I see is six. The four represents 400, so it's going to be 400 something meters. The six represents the tens, so that's 60. So the shortest waterfall is about 460 meters. To find the range of values, we're going to do the greatest value minus the least value, which you guys already know. So that means we're going to do the tallest waterfall minus the shortest waterfall. 980 minus 460. And when I do that, I get 520. So the range of values is 520 meters. The difference between the tallest waterfall and the shortest waterfall is 520 meters. Now we need to find the median. And to do this, we're going to treat it the same way we do as if it were in a list, meaning we're going to start at the front and mark one, go to the back and mark one, go back to the front and mark another one, go back to the back and mark another one until we meet in the middle. So I like to use a highlighter to do this on stem and leaf plots, and we only need to mark the leaves. So I'm going to start with the first leaf, and then I'm going to mark the last leaf. Then I'm going to go to the second leaf, and then I'm going to mark the second to last leaf. And I'm just going to keep going until I meet in the middle. And once I get there, I see that there are two ones in the middle. That means, so let's look at our stem. That's 600, and then the one is the leaf. That's 10. So that means 610 and 610 are both at the middle of the list. Well, remember, the median is whatever number is smack dab in the middle of those two numbers. Is there anything in the middle of 610 and 610? No. There's nothing in between those two numbers because it's the same number. So our median here is going to be 610 meters. This means that half of the waterfalls in the list are at least 610 meters tall. Now we need to find the modes. And again, this is just the numbers that occur the most often in our list. So if I look at my stems, those don't occur more than once. I need to look at the leaves and see which numbers in the leaves occur more than once. I notice over here that I have two nines in my, uh, in my leaves for the stem of four. So that's 490. 490 appears two times. And let's look and see if we find any others that appear more than once. Right here I see two ones next to each other, so that's 610. 610 appears twice as well. Because both of these numbers appear twice, they are both the modes. So our modes are 490 and 610. 
And then when we look and want to see where most values occur, we're going to see which leaves or which stem has the most leaves, okay? So how many leaves are there on each stem? I noticed that this stem right here has more leaves than any other one. So that means most values occur in the 600 to 690 interval. All that means is that they occur in the 600s range. Most of the tallest water, or most of the waterfalls, the tallest waterfalls in the world, occur in the 600 foot to 700 foot range, okay? So let's look at this problem. The stem and leaf plot shows the results of the math test scores for her students, for someone's students, I don't know whose. Okay, interpret the data. So again, the first thing we need to do is look at the key. And the key here tells us that the nine is the tens place and the one, the leaf, is the, the ones place. And we're figuring this in percent. We're measuring in percent. So let's look at the lowest score. The lowest score is the first value listed in the stem and leaf plot. The first stem is eight. So that's our tens value. And then the first leaf is zero. That's the ones value. And then this is being measured in percent. So the lowest score on the tests were 80 per, or is 80%. Now we want to find the highest score and that's going to be the last value in our stem and leaf plot. So I'm gonna find the last stem, which is 10. So I can write that. And then I'm going to find the last leaf, which is zero, and I'm going to write that. So the highest score is 100%. Now we need to find the range of values, which is simply 100 minus 80, and that is 20. So the range is 20%. The scores differ from each other by 20%. Now we need to find the mode. That's the number that occurs the most often. And so I'm going to circle the numbers that I see. I'm going to circle the leaves that I see the most. So right here, I see a whole bunch of fives on this stem. And then I see two ones, two threes, two fives, two eights, and two zeros. Well, the mode is the number that occurs the most often. And the one that occurs the most often is this one right here and that's 85. So the mode is 85%. Most of the students in her class made 85% on the test. Now we need to find the median. So again, we're gonna work with the leaves and we're gonna start at the front, then go to the back, front, back, front, back, just like we do in a list. So we'll mark them off and see what we get in the middle. Okay, and it's kind of hard to see because I had drawn a line over it before when I was circling it, but there is a one right here, and that is in the middle. So that means that the median score is 91%. Now we need to explain what that means. That means that half of the students scored higher than 91%, and half of the students scored below 91%. Let's try one more. Determine the median, mode, and range of the data shown in the stem and leaf plot below. So we're told how many free throws are made in this stem and leaf plot. And again, the first thing we need to do is look at the key, which is here. And when we look at the key, it says the stem is 3, the leaf is 2, and that means 32. So in this stem and leaf plot, the stems are the tens values and the leaves are the ones. So I want you to go ahead and try to find the lowest and the highest values and the range on your own. Press pause to do all this and then when you're confident in your answer, press play to check. The lowest number of shots made was 14. The highest number of shots made was 42, and the range of values was 28. Now we need to find the mode, the number that occurs the most often in the list. So I want you to look at the leaves and see which ones occur the most often to determine the mode. Press pause to do this, and then press play to check once you are confident in your answer. 
The mode is twenty-five. Most people made twenty-five free throws. Now you need to find the median and then explain what the median tells us. So go ahead and remember, start at the front, then go to the back and mark them off until you meet in the middle to find that median. And then tell me what that means. Explain what the median means. Once you figure all this out, press play to check your answer. The median is 27.5. Now let's see what that means. What this means is that half of the people made more than 27 and a half free throws and half of the people made less than 27 and a half free throws. So guys, you're done. Great job. We'll work on this more in class tomorrow.